Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, I want to talk about an interesting topic that I came up with maybe like a few months back, and I've been pontificating about it. There's a fancy word. Uh, watch it not even be used correctly, <laughs> but I've been thinking about it. Uh, today's video is all about uh, five-star books that I remember nothing about. And I think this is an interesting topic because generally, if you give something five stars, that means you absolutely loved it, and you would think they would be very memorable. Usually the books that I have the least amount of memory for are the ones that are kind of in the middle. Like, you're supposed to remember five-star books because they're supposed to be, like, all-time favorites, and of course you're going to remember one-star books because you really hated them and you kind of pinpoint, like, why this is a terrible book or why you had such a bad time with it. Usually books that are kind of in the middle like two and a half, three stars, like, like they're not bad. They just weren't for you and they didn't really do anything all that interesting. Maybe they weren't very risky at all. It was just kind of very cookie cutter and you really kind of thought it was meh. Usually those are the kind of books that I tend to forget about. But I've been thinking, just kind of like scrolling through on Goodreads, just like looking at my five stars. They're normally books that I really love like stuff in like fantasy series or just like all time, I don't know, favorite Stephen King books or George R. R. Martin books, just all time favorite books. But then I see a couple of books and I'm like, wait a minute. I know I've read this book, but I remember jack shit about this book. <laughs> what happened in this book? So that those are the books I'm going to talk about today, which might be a bad idea because like I said, I don't remember a lot about these books. So It'll be interesting. Come join me as I talk about these books, or try to. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So up front, I'm going to talk about uh, just some authors that have a lot of these, because there's a lot of authors that have written a lot of books, and it's kind of hard to remember all of them, right? Especially ones that you haven't read in a while. And probably one of the main uh, villains of this video is Dean Koontz. I read a lot of Dean Koontz in college and then kind of fell off that bandwagon because I started trying to read him again and his writing style just didn't really click with me. And so I've read a lot of his books, probably close to 35 or 40 in that range. And there's a lot of them that I do remember or maybe I remember like the ending very vividly, but there's a lot of books that I just, I'm looking at my Goodreads. I'm just like, what, what is this book? Or like, what happened? And ironically, one of them is False Memory, <laughs> which the title, you know, memory in the title. I gave it five stars, or maybe four and a half stars. I don't remember what it's about. I don't remember the premise. I don't remember the characters. I gave it five stars, but it really had not really that much of a lasting impression. Some some of them do. Like, some of them I do remember. Like, Demon Seed, I gave five stars, apparently. I do remember that book quite well. He also has a series called Frankenstein, which is a very trippy series. Uh, I apparently gave the first two books five stars. I remember some things about it, but a lot of it is just gone, which is crazy, because... I apparently loved those books, but yeah, I've given a lot of Dean Koontz books five stars and just, or four or five stars, and it's been a long time since I've read them, and I really don't remember that much about them. The other culprit with this is Agatha Christie, and I normally love Agatha Christie books, or at least enjoy them, so most of my time with Agatha Christie is at least three stars, usually four or five stars. Her books are just really fun. They're very formulaic, though, which means that they're they're really all about, like, 200 to 
250, 300 page murder mysteries. And that's essentially all that she writes, except for like a couple of contemporary books that she wrote under a different pen name. But essentially all of her books are the same formula where someone gets murdered or someone gets kidnapped and you have to figure out what happened, who done it. And while some of them are definitely memorable, like Murder on the Order, Orient Express, that one's definitely memorable and has one of the mo the best endings to a uh, murder mystery ever. It was really good, very memorable. Other examples, uh, and then there were none, very memorable. But then there's other examples that I see that I've given books five stars to, and I really don't remember what they are. Uh, uh, five Little Pigs I gave five stars, which I know is a Hercule Poirot book. I couldn't tell you what happened in that book. I'm assuming it's supposed to be based on like a nursery rhyme, which a lot of her books are, which is a pretty fun thing to do. But Five Little Pigs, I couldn't tell you what the premise of that is to save my life. Uh, Lord Edgware Dies, I gave that book five stars have no recollection of what that is. A dumb witness I do remember because it's got a dog on the cover and that the dog kind of takes place in the mystery. So that one I do remember. Um, Appointment with Death is like my favorite one, but I'll be honest, I still don't remember that much about it, which means I probably need to reread it. Uh, Peril at End House I gave five stars, but I actually do remember the ending to that one at least. Death on the Nile, I read that, that was one of my more recent books, which I gave probably four and a half or five stars, but I don't remember the ending. <laughs> That's crap. See, like, this just happens sometimes. But like I said, and then there were none, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, like, I gave those books five stars, but they have very memorable endings. Uh, so yeah, Agatha Christie is another culprit. Another author I got into... I don't know, maybe like five years ago, maybe four. I don't remember the timeline, but I got really into Harlan Coben uh, a while ago. And I really enjoyed a lot of his books. They were very fresh and very fun. But looking at his books on my, or looking at my red books on Goodreads, I've given a lot of them five stars. But if you ask me to summarize them, I could not do it. Uh, uh, he's got a series uh, with the main character Myron Bolitar, which was pretty interesting because it was like a sport. It was like a detective, but he only did like sports mysteries. So I think the first one dealt with like football and then one of them was like basketball and hockey. So it was pretty interesting. If you ask me to tell you what they were like the main premises for like book one and two were like what actually happened and like what the ending were. I couldn't tell you, but I gave book one and two five stars. And I don't remember really anything about them. He also had a few standalones that I read. Uh, the Stranger I gave three stars. And usually, like I said, with three stars, I don't remember much about them, which makes sense. But then I read another one of his standalones called Don't Let Go. I have zero, <laughs> zero idea what that is about. I'm actually going to look up what the summary is, because honestly, I, I do not know. Uh, suburban New Jersey detective Napoleon Nap Dumas hasn't been the same since senior year of high school, when his twin brother Leo and Leo's girlfriend Diana were found dead on the railroad tracks. And Mara, the girl Nap considered the love of his life, broke up with them and disappeared without explanation. For 15 years, Knapp has been searching, both for Mara and for the real reason behind his brother's death. And now it looks as though he might finally find what he's been looking for. This, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> when Mara's fingerprints turn up in the rental car of a suspected murderer, Knapp embarks on a quest for answers that only leads to more questions. About the woman he loved, about the childhood friends he thought he knew, about the abandoned military ba base near where he grew up, and mostly about Leo and Diana, whose deaths are darker and more, far more sinister than Nap ever dared imagine. I'm not convinced I read this book. <laughs> I have zero recollection of this plot. And I gave this book five stars. It, it, it's crazy. I, I don't know. 
That, that's a perfect example. I have zero recollection of that book. And then I also have some examples of just individual books uh, that I've read that I've given uh, either four and a half or five stars to uh, that I just don't remember. Um, the first one I'll talk about is uh, The Invention of Everything Else by Samantha Hunt. Now, the reason I read this book is because I read uh, one of her kind of literary horror books called Mr. Splitfoot. This book I gave five stars to, and while I don't remember everything about it, I, I still, there's a lot of vivid scenes in that book that I still remember, and it's a book that I want to go back and reread. But that one, even though I don't remember everything about it, there's still some vivid scenes in that book for me. So I, so I read, uh, I think, probably her first book called The Invention of Everything Else. I gave it five stars. I remember maybe bits and pieces of it. Like, I think Tesla has something to do with it, and there's a pigeon on the cover. I don't remember what, <laughs> what the significance of the pigeon is. That's a funny sentence. What is the significance of the pigeon? But like I said, I don't even remember who the main character is. Like, I'm trying to... I, I, I need to read the summary here. It is 1943, and the renowned inventor Nikola Tesla, which I do remember, occupies a forbidden room on the 33rd floor of the Hotel New Yorker, stealing electricity. Louisa a young maid at the hotel, determined to befriend him, wins his attention through a shared love of pigeons. <laughs> I don't remember this at all. With her, we hear his tragic and tremendous life story unfold. Meanwhile, Louisa discovers that her father and her handsome enigm enigmatic love interest, Arthur Vaughn, are on an unlikely mission to travel back in time and find his beloved late wife. The fuck? <laughs> a masterful hybrid of history, biography, and science fiction, the invention of everything else is an absorbing story about love and death and a wonderfully imagined homage to one of history's most visionary scientists. I wish I remembered this. This sounds, this sounds pretty dope. But, uh... Yeah, the pigeons made me laugh out loud. I, God, I read. I must have read this book like years and years ago. I don't remember this at all. Maybe it's worth a reread. I don't know, but yeah, that uh, that made me chuckle. Another book that I really enjoyed at the time and gave five stars to was "Cross Her Heart" by Sarah Pinborough, and you might recognize that name because it's the same author as "Behind Her Eyes," which, if you've read that book. The ending to that book is not easily forgettable. It's one of the more unforgettable endings ever. And with a twist that uh, rarely anyone would see coming. It blew me away. I loved it. I gave it five stars, although the rest of the book was pretty good. But that ending, I had never read an ending like that. And it blew me away. So I went ahead and picked up uh, one of her other books, which I believe came out after that, called Cross Her Heart. And I remember that one being better, like, throughout, even though the ending wasn't nearly as good as Behind Her Eyes. I remember just getting really engrossed in that book and just, you know. But as I think about it, I really don't remember what the book is about, which is crazy because I gave it five stars. I read it probably two or three years ago, maybe. And I loved it at the time. But again, I'll kind of read through and see if I can, like, spark a memory of it. Uh, Lisa lives for her daughter, Ava, her job, and her best friend, Marilyn. But when a handsome client shows an interest in her, Lisa starts daydreaming about sharing her life with him, too. Maybe she's ready now. Maybe she can trust again. Maybe it's time to let her terrifying secret past go. Then her daughter rescues a boy from drowning, and their pictures are all over the news for everyone to see. Lisa's world explodes, and she finds everything she has built threatened, not knowing whom she can trust. It's up to her to face her past, to save what she holds dear. So that's kind of vague. Uh, that doesn't really help me. I might have like a slight recollection of her saving a drowned boy, maybe. But after that, man, 
I have no clue. I, I read this book years ago, and I loved it, and I don't remember anything about it. I hope this video is interesting. It's, uh, hope, hopefully this sparks some interest for you to maybe go back and check your Goodreads to see if you have any five-star books that you just genuinely don't remember, because it's kind of baffles me. Like, I loved this book, and now I don't remember anything about it. Another book is The Life We Bury by Alan... Eskins, which is apparently the first book in uh, the J Joe Talbert series. Uh, I do remember some aspects of this. Like I, like I know Joe is a college student, and I think he might be interviewing someone. Uh, I have no idea who he's interviewing. I think he has a brother that may have special needs. And I think there might be a girl. <laughs> uh, very vague terms here. Uh, but I don't remember what the story is. I don't remember why he's interviewing. I also don't know where the story goes. I don't know what the ending is. I don't know what... I just don't... I've, like, I, remember, I remember some things, but a lot of it is just a cloud in my mind. I'll go ahead and read this. College student Joe Talbert has the modest goal of completing a writing assignment for an English class. His task is to interview a stranger and write a brief biography of the person. Okay, I remember that. With deadlines looming, Joe heads to a nearby nursing home to find a willing subject. There he meets Carl Iverson, and soon nothing in Joe's life is ever the same. Carl is a dying Vietnam veteran and a convicted murderer. With only a few months to live, he has been medically paroled to a nursing home after spending 30 years in prison for the crimes of rape and murder. I did not remember that. <laughs> uh, as Joe writes about Carl's life, especially Carl's valor in Vietnam, he cannot reconcile the heroism of the soldier with the despicable, despicable acts of the convict. Joe, along with his skeptical female neighbor, throws himself into uncovering the truth but he is hamstrung in his efforts by having to deal with his dangerously dysfunctional mother. I don't remember the mother character at all. Uh, the guilt of leaving his autistic brother, okay, I remember that, uh, vulnerable, and a haunting childhood memory. Thread by thread, Joe unravels the tapestry of Carl's conviction, but as he and Lila dig deeper into the circumstances of the crime, the stakes grow higher. Will Joe discover the truth before it's too late to escape the fallout? So I remember some things. Like, I remember his brother, and I remember the interviewing. Have no, I have no recollection of his mother. Uh, yeah. Uh, I gave this book five stars, and I barely remember it, so. Another clear example. And the last book that I'll talk about today is The Holdout by Graham Moore. Now, I remember the basic premise of this book where it's a jury like all I think there's characters and they're in a jury that's about it <laughs> that's the only thing I remember uh I, I think maybe in like every chapter you get a different perspective from a different juror if I remember correctly but like I said uh, it's been at least a few years this came out in 2020 so it's at least been three years since I've read this uh, and I gave it five stars or you know, four and a half, five stars. Sometimes on Goodreads, I'll give a book five stars, even though it's only four and a half, but I, I rated it very highly and I really don't remember. Uh, I'll, 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 oh, that's a long thing. I'll just read over it real quick. Um, yeah, uh, reading over it, I, I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. It's crazy to me. Oh, oh, since that's my last one, I'll just go ahead and ask, uh, are there any examples that you can think of? Books that you've given five stars to, but maybe it's been a few years or, you know, sometimes a few months and you just, like, it completely goes out of your brain. Like, in one year, out the other. You've read it. You loved it at the time. But now, th trying to think back on it, you really don't remember that much about it. If you guys have any examples of that, please leave it down in the comments below. Uh, let me know if any of those books for you are my books that I just mentioned. Like, did you read a bunch of Dean Koontz and Agatha Christie books? 
and gave them five stars and now you're having a hard time remembering what the hell they're about, please leave all your um, lovely comments down below. And thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of it down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Bookish Drummer Discord. I also have my Patreon page and my Amazon wish list if you'd like to support me in those ventures. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day.